Hello everyone, welcome back to FX021. So now that we have our monster ground and sand, we can create our smoke. So let's create a geo folder called smoke monster and dive inside. So here I use uh, object merge here uh, to get the sand, uh, sand simulation from the sand here. Okay, so you can see uh, the simulation here it's a little bit slow because we have a lot of point but yeah you can see the uh, sand simulation here uh, and we want to use this to generate smoke but we don't want all these you know all these parts uh, create uh, as a uh, sauce for the smoke simulation so we only want the one that collide with the monster to have the generate to generate smoke so we use some attribute uh, we use attribute wrangle to to you know uh, delete all the one that we don't need so because when the monster collide with our uh, greens then this green will have velocity otherwise all these other uh, greens that it will rest there so they will have a velocity at zero so we just use a lens for the v attribute so the velocity is a vector so when you use a lens here it will be a float and if it's smaller than a certain value here we set it to 0 0.081 then we can use remove point here so remove point zero at point number so it will remove the current point so now you can see that the v at uh, the point here that has a smaller velocity we delete all that so now you can see the one left here is the one that monster collide with and uh, that will have a velocity here so we will use this point to generate our smoke so now you can see i use a switch node here because i don't want any simulation uh, the smoke at the first 28 frames here so i use a switch node here so you can see for the first 28 uh, frames first 27 frames it's gonna read the now node here. So I use expression set dot f uh, equals smaller than 28. So it will read the now here. So it will be uh, no smoke here because uh, we're gonna render this at uh, this uh, frame one to frame 27. The monster are not colliding with the stand. So yeah, so we don't want to waste our uh, simulation time on the first 27 frames. So I just use switch node. Now after the 20 uh, frame 28, let's go to the frame 29 here. Now you can see these uh, sand here. And I think, you know, let's go to frame 88 maybe. Now you can see, I think these are still too much point here. So I use another attribute wrangle here. Uh, so I use a random uh, function here. So if the random number is smaller than our threshold, it's gonna remove uh, the point. So now I set it to 0 0.8. So it will remove 80% of the point. So you can see before it's they have lots of points. Now we have the the function here it remove eight eighty percent of the point. So if we set to one, there will be no point. And you can change the slider here. So zero point eight, I think it's pretty good value. So now I create now here. This is the point for our smoke simulation. And one thing I notice is that let's turn on our point display here. So one thing I notice that is maybe our collider is not precise enough. You can see some of the uh, sand going 
like fall down like penetrate through our collider so you can see uh, let's go you can see these are some points that have velocity but because they are not gonna render in our camera and it's penetrates through the ground we don't want these point as well so we just delete this point that are below the ground so I use expression here at p dot y less than zero so these point are deleted so before it's something like this now we delete this point and uh, turn off the point display here now use the attribute delete I will delete all the attribute except the velocity because I want the velocity here for the smoke simulation and now just the normal step for create our smoke simulation we use a pyro sauce here it will create a density and temperature for us you just need to change the initialize to the smoke here so you will get the density and temperature attribute and you can play around with the particle separation and the particle scale here so now that these points have density and temperature attribute we just because the default value is one so if we visualize our temperature here it's all gonna be white because it's one and now we just add some noise on top of that so that the density and attribute are different so you can see the visualization of the temperature here you can see the blue uh, white and red here so if we go to the temperature here uh, it's lagging so you can see I have some zero value have some 0 0.5 have some one so yeah the temperature are different so you can here in the attribute names here you can change it to float and type density and temperature here and you can range value from zero center and change the amplitude the element size and turn on the animate noise and you can play around minimum and maximum value here so that you get like a different density and temperature so you can go to geometry spreadsheet here you can see the density is some 2.2 some are 0 some are 1.5 and at the same as temperature they have different value here so now you can turn turn off the visualization of the temperature now you can turn this point into a volume so use a volume rasterize attribute here just uh, type density temperature and the velocity here uh, now you, these points are turned into a voxel so density uh, turn into a yeah volume and uh, you can turn on the normalize by clamp coverage and uh, change the voxel size to and the particle skill particle skill here I think I link it to the pyro sauce here so it's the same as the particle separation here you ju I just copy parameter here and uh, paste relative reference here okay so when you change the particle separation here this will change as well so now that you have your rasterized attribute here we can feed that into a smoke simulation so let's go to the first frame and dive into the top network here so uh, I think I already talked about the dog network a lot of times so this is the sparse solver so you need a sparse smoke object and the volume source here so in the, for the volume source you can change uh, you can choose source smoke here so it will create density temperature and the velocity attribute for you yeah, make sure you turn on in large fields to contain sources and uh, you can scale the source by 10 for the density and uh, play around with the uh, temperature here okay you can copy my value you can test it yourself 
but I think this works the best for me and uh, I think yeah because we uh, delete the point under uh, below the Y so we don't also don't want our smoke calculate below the uh, 0.5 so we just don't calculate the smoke under the like below the 0.5 uh, here and you can change the voxel size here to get the more precise more detailed smoke simulation here and under the pyro solvers here i just add a little bit of wind so it's zero negative 0 0.5 so the wind direction is here and for the simulation here i think i turn increase the cooling rate and change the reference temperature and uh, turn down a little bit of the buoyancy skill and i think in the shape here i think uh these are all the change i do here 0 0.5 for the dissipation and the disturbance for 4.58 and turn on the turbulence a little bit and as well we need the two uh, collider the ground and monster you can copy it to from the sand simulation these are the same setup and then you merge it make sure it's like left input effect right and output this okay as well uh, uh, you can use a top input field here so you have your density velocity rest uh, and temperature and cd here i don't think you need rest and cd but i import this so the top network here is the you can copy this and the top node here is the you can copy the path of this just control c the smoke object sparse and uh, paste it here then you can visualize your smoke and before you file cache your smoke you can use a pyro pro post process to compress your file cache so it will be a smaller file if you're using a pyro post process so now that uh, we cache our smoke you can visualize it so go to your frame maybe uh, 882 now you can see our smoke okay i think the density is too much but you can uh, tweak that in the renders so i'm not too worried about that and uh, yeah you can see i add a volume visualization here so the i think it's good here so i create out here then I can render this out. I think that's it for today. In the next chapter, I'm going to talk about uh, render it in comma. See you in next chapter.